Welcome to Montgomery Arts Infusion, a video window into our county's diverse and wonderful arts community. I'm your guide, Mitty Hicks. We're coming to you from Catch a Dream Studio, the creative home of fine jewelry artist Loretta Kanashigi. Thank you, Loretta, for letting us use your studio here in Sandy Spring Museum. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. Anything for Montgomery Arts. More than 300 years of local history are on display at Sandy Spring, but it's more than a museum. It's also a venue for concerts, weddings, festivals, and more. Sandy Springs artists in residence are talented area potters, quilters, architects, painters, and silversmiths who work in studios scattered across the campus. The Catch a Dream studio is one of three in a renovated barn connected by a walkway to the main building. So I understand, Loretta, you're making earrings like these. That's right. Loretta will continue to work on one of her designs while we're here. And we'll check back in with you later, Loretta. Sounds great. Today on MAI, we'll also explore some amazing stories from around the county, including an artist practicing a 5,000-year-old art. We'll meet a former gardener who is leaving a legacy in stone, and we'll see how one group is spreading diversity through dance. First up, MAI producer Gaynell Evans and videographer Nick Rule introduce us to an artist who practices a 21st century version of henna and ancient art. Take a look. My canvas is your skin. My name is Bhavna Naik and uh, my art form is henna. It's a traditional body art. Henna, the art form, is at least 5,000 years old. It started as a medicinal plant. They thought that it's the plant that makes your body cooler by two to three degrees. And they used to rub the, the leaves of the plant on their soles of their feet. And when it started to stain their feet, that's when they decided, why don't we use it as body art? No celebration or no wedding is complete without henna. I meet people at their most happiest and at their most fearful because they're taking a step into a new life and especially for Indian brides and many of these brides are still arranged marriages you really don't know what you're stepping into when I sit to the bride I actually meet her sometimes a year in advance because I booked I get booked a year in advance we sit and discuss every element of design I get inspiration for my designs from many places but I do get it from my bride's energy her personality, who she is. Henna happened to me and it is me, which I never knew. So thank you God for that. Thank you, Bhavna Naik, for introducing us to 21st century henna. Now let's check in with Loretta here at Catch a Dream Studio. How's it coming? Great, so I started by heating this piece of silver to soften it. And now I'm going to put it with this texture plate through this rolling mill to add texture to the sterling silver. That adds interest to the jewelry. Great. Well, I can't wait to see it. Well, our next story takes us to Western Montgomery County, where one man is growing a garden of stone. MCM's Vincent Saragino reports. <laughs> Just a stone's throw away from Poolsville, Maryland, is Bealsville, and the crown jewel of Bealsville is Alden Farms. Alden Farms is run by David Terrio and his wife Sandy. David, a landscaper by trade, ran Alden Farms as a garden center for 25 years. They then transformed Alden Farms into a sculpture garden for the public to enjoy. It was a natural progression from landscape design work to retail garden center where I could show my work both in the landscaping design and the plants that I appreciate. It was also the beginnings of creating a garden that people could come and visit and enjoy my sculpture. David uses a lot of repurposed stone. He has stones from residential and commercial constructions. Some of his stone even comes from museums down in DC. A lot of people seem to use stone because of its color and, and they can polish it and, and they can get a lot of color and a lot of 
glow out of it. I don't use it for that. I use it very natural stone and leave it as natural as I can. David does not work exclusively with stone and will mix elements such as metal and glass into his work. They're already combined, you know, the metal and the stone and, and sometimes you add the water as a waterfall. Those earth elements are easily put together. And that's why I, I think I'm more of a sculptor than a carver. A carver tends to create an image where I am just highlighting what you're already seeing. David's home, workshop, showroom, and the sculpture garden are all here in one place. I have a barn that I use as a gallery and I work out back. I use mainly diamond bladed uh, circular saws and grinders, but also with uh, both hand and pneumatic chisels. My pieces are very accessible. They have a way of fitting into almost any landscape. Alden Farms is open to the public, but it is just one of the many stops that you can visit during the Countryside Artesian of Maryland's Fall Gallery and Studio Tour, going on from October 13th through the 15th. I just want people to come, enjoy the setting, enjoy the pieces, that's enough, you know. That's really what I'm trying to do. In Bealesville, Maryland, I'm Vincent Saragino. Alden Farms is a good example of the diversity of art available in Montgomery County. Next, producer and videographer Nick Rule shows us how a Silver Spring dance school gains street cred by spreading diversity. <laughs> So urban artistry is basically a collective of people that came together in 2005 with one mission in mind, and that was to be cultural ambassadors for different types of urban dance. The whole idea is respect culture, right? So if I can respect a different dance culture, I can respect um, someone of a different background, you know, and, and understand the way they think and, and the way they were raised, and these are important things to us. When they come in the studio, I want them to see these guys have done their research, they're culturally sound, they're participating in the different communities, and they're known in those communities, and they have respect in those communities. Um, and I want them to see how much that dance can offer you, like as a person. This is our, this is our, our home base, like come, come jam with us. Like there's something for everybody in this space, you know and we keep it very intimate, we keep it very casual, um, and very welcoming. This is a, a very uh, inclusive space, so I think it's, it's a nice place to just come and peek your head in and ask a few questions and see what's going on. So how can I learn how to make jewelry like this? Well, like the other artists here at Sandy Spring Museum, I teach classes. You can take a three-hour or one-day workshop, or you can take a five-week class. And you can sign up to take classes with all the artists in residence here, like Loretta, and visit their studios during the museum's monthly open houses. That's it for this episode of Montgomery Arts Infusion. We hope you enjoyed our stories about the art and artists in Montgomery County. For more information on any of our stories, check us out at mymcmedia.org. Until next time, be well and be creative. <laughs>